Welcome to a very, very special episode of the Ambition Podcast. Um, I'm here with my, my bro Ace and a very special guest, and I'm going to let this person introduce themselves, so uh, go ahead. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm Sammy Copley from YouTube. I'm a musician, or at least I try to be. <laughs> so, uh... Really excited to have you on. Um, uh, I gotta say, I've been I've been listening to your covers and and your songs um, since uh, I found I was looking around. I was trying to learn how to play um, "Don't Look Back in Anger" on guitar, and I looked up covers, and you were the one of the first videos that popped up, and I really liked your version, uh, your playthrough of it, and it was really really good. And so I started listening to your work, and it's really extraordinary. Thank you so much. I'm honored. I mean, it, yeah, it's kind of weird that the thought that people could look up covers of songs and I'd be one of the first faces they see. I never really expected that to be a thing, but you know. But that's just that's a good sign of like, your intent, you know. Yeah, thank you. So, so uh, w- when did you uh, uh, start playing guitar? Um, I started playing guitar when I was. I think now 12, I think, so 2013. I took lessons with a friend because she used to take them with her sister, but her sister got bored of it, and I thought, you know what, screw it. Maybe this will impress people. And then I got obsessed and she didn't, so. <laughs> oh. Um, so, would you say that, like, taking, like, lessons or learning by yourself, which do you think is, like, a better approach, do you think? Um... I think lessons are definitely a worthwhile investment and that you don't have to necessarily like stick with them for the rest of your life. I know I only did them for like a year, year and a half maybe, but they were great for giving me the building blocks of like the basics and then what I did like a little bit more in depth sort of stuff to see where I really wanted to take it. Because if you don't really have lessons, it's hard to know what you don't know (laughs) or what you should be looking for, you know? Yeah, that's, that's very true. I never really thought about it like that. Um, but, uh, me, me and Ace, uh, we both play guitar, and we, we both started, uh, I, I started a couple years ago, and he started recently, and he's been taking lessons, so, uh, mm-hmm. so Ace, how, how would you say, you know, taking lessons, uh, compares to just trying things on your own? Uh, I feel like, uh, practicing is one of the bigger keys of learning guitar, because I still suck at it, but <laughs> I'm gonna try to give try to give a good synopsis of of why practicing is better cuz you need your own you need I, I don't know how to say this but you need to work up the skills that you're learning and because of practicing you're you're going to gang I don't know how to say anything I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to mute myself so I don't have to all right goodbye that's a big move <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I agree with that. I think if you don't, like, there's no point getting lessons or anything like that if you're not gonna t- practice. But, you know, it's useful to have something to practice. Yeah, that's true. Ace, come back on. <laughs> you're part, you're part of this. <laughs> I, ha- I have you under contract here, so so you kind of... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so... I noticed that also on your channel, uh, you make a lot of original songs, which is really cool. I, I really admire people trying to make their own music, and you know, I've tried not very successfully uh, trying to write lyrics in general because it's kind of hard to fit lyrics to chords, I guess. But ha- how would you describe your process of just making music? That's a very good question because I have no idea really how I would <laughs> describe my process. I guess. When I first started writing songs, it was just sort of a way to vent Hmm. in a form that I could share and be like, hey, everyone, look at all my problems. But now you can sing along, you know? (laughs) (laughs) But I think studying the people that I want to emulate in my songwriting, so like Leonard Cohen or Bob Dylan or Paul Simon, those kind of people, Hmm. their their lyricism, because that's what I really, that's what I really love about songwriting is the lyrics. I know a lot of people were probably focused more on, you know, the actual sounds that you're making, and <laughs> I should probably look more into that and how to 
get better like variations of chords and stuff but you know i think my process comes from looking at things that inspire me or situations that were particularly hard to unpack and then trying to do so in as eloquent a way as i can hmm. and as catchy a way as i can <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's very well said um so let's see uh I've, i let's see uh, uh okay i got this i can think um <laughs> Uh, okay, and now I know what I was going to say. Um, so I was listening to some of your covers, and I found uh, you played the song Creep by Radiohead. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is I had never heard that song until I listened to you play it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a classic. <laughs> I, I know, I, I feel I feel bad already, but... <laughs> I was listening to it, and I was like, man, this song's amazing. And... If anything, I'd say your version of it was equal to the original, which is what I guess the basis of a cover is, you know? Mm. And it like, I'm honored. Radiohead are like top tier, so. <laughs> and um, I actually tried to uh, practice learning. I, instead of looking up, like, I think this guy's name is like Marty Music, I think, on YouTube. Oh, I've heard of him. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, instead of like looking up one of his videos to try to learn how to play that song, I, I kind of just well, listened to your version and tried to pick it up from there. Oh, cool. So, I don't know. I really I really liked uh, that uh, listening to that song and, you know, hear, hearing you hearing you play it. And I probably sound like uh, a really uh, irritating fan person right Fando. now. <laughs> fan fan boy, no, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, that song is kind of it's like deceptively it sounds deceptively simple because the strumming pattern of it is really weird as soon as you start trying to sing along yeah so i don't know if it's like it's one of those things you're like there's only four chords surely this is a great beginner song then you try playing you're like what the heck is going on oh yeah yeah definitely that's um, music in general <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, that's a mood. <laughs> very very well said um <laughs> The uh, so do you um in I mean it's not it's most people don't really think about this very far ahead but what what are your plans do you think of just like doing music what what do you think your goals are uh good question I would love to put together like an EP or an album I'd love to get into more like concept albums and stuff at least just getting some of my stuff produced at all would be kind of the biggest step going forward and then i don't know i guess touring performing that sort of thing yeah that'd be awesome getting monetized oh, <laughs> Get yeah. my face up there again. getting monetized thank you youtube yeah <laughs> <My algorithm. laughs> no my tower fell over oops i'm uh, okay my <laughs> yeah you, we, we've we've ranted about the youtube algorithm several times it's really in <laughs> Okay, well, I gotta go get let my raptor out of the cage real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was me stretching. Please stop making fun of me, bro. I'm Come sorry. on. I apologize. Um, but anyway, um. So I know I, um, I listened to Queen and uh, I, I listened to your your cover of I believe it was a uh, Killer Queen, right? You played that, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. So when did you learn piano, or did you kind of just or did you start recently, or? Uh, I first got a piano in 2016, I think, off a friend for free because she was getting a newer and better one and just said, "Hey, you want this?" So I was like, "All right," and that was the first time I ever actually played it. So I'm pretty much completely self-taught on piano, which is why I'm not the greatest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, so since about, like, December of 2016. Amazing. Um, that's really cool. I, see, I, I've never really tried playing piano, uh, except for, like, in elementary school, going to the music classroom and, like, playing, like, random keys and turning on, like, the sound effects. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, that was always the highlight of <laughs> any music class, was just 
How weird can I make this? Yeah. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Basically. Our, my brother's a part of band, and he gets his, gets his trumpet every morning. He comes into my room, and he just blasts his trumpet in my ear. <laughs> I... Oh. Yeah, no, I hate trumpets. Oh, snap. I just had to share that story. My bad. No, you're part. Of, you. You're part of this. We we are blessed within with this story. Indeed. Yes. All right. Keep, keep talking. I. I, I uh, uh, yay. <laughs> I think if uh, I think the piano is probably one of those instruments that is great for picking up music in the first place because you can just see all the notes in front of you whereas with guitar it's just sort of well this is a shape i guess that's making a noise and if yeah. you want to get more depth with it with it you have to be very like committed to that i suppose yeah and i mean there's a lot of like you know pros and cons from like where you learn piano where you learn guitar where you learn really in, in the instrument so it, it's kind of hard to generalize but i really do think it's whatever works for people you know yeah and i think what you're doing works for you and it's very it's very obvious in your music that you have a passion for it thank you i'm glad it i'm glad it translates yeah and because there's there's very obviously there's so much music uh and it's a lot of it sadly is like very mass produced and people can kind of tell when like that passion is gone Mm. Or at least it's not like in the front. It's maybe it's somewhere back in the back of somebody's mind, but like it's uh, not obvious with like the marketing and stuff. It's like so many songs are made so fast. And what what yeah. when I listen to music? Oh, sorry, did I cut you off? No, I was just agreeing with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, but when I listen to music, I kind of I've started to listen more to the lyrics and uh, like like you said like. You, you really like to focus on the lyrics behind a song uh, than just the sounds people are making. And um, uh, I think one example of like people, a person who really works on their lyrics that I, I found recently, Ace actually introduced me to him, is uh, the band's name is uh, A Grandson. Um, I don't think I've heard of them. It's a cool name though. Yeah, um, they, they make a lot of like, you know, uh, I guess it'd be like alternative rock. Um, it would be considered edgy music between, like, I, I uh, more or less kinda edgy music, but they, I think, I feel like they go a bit more in, in depth on their songs. But that's my opinion on them. <laughs> yeah, and, and they go really, like, like I said, it goes really in depth. They go really in depth with like their lyrics, and for like example, uh, one of their songs is called uh, A St Stick Up, and it, it, it tells a story of like several people from like veterans, and you know, people who are, the economy's going downhill for them, and like coming with the, just like machinery improving and stuff like that, and like them resorting to violence, and I know that's kind of like a dark th turn to take all of a sudden, but <laughs> They, 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 it's very well, like, you can imagine, you can, like, hear, like, through the song, like, they're, like, they only see, the only way to fix their uh, solution is violence, and you can hear, like, their struggle just through the lyrics, and it's very, it's very fluid, and it, and it seems, like, very detailed, and not, like, it's, it's not wordy, but it's wordy, like, in the right places for it to, like, get across what the, what the song means, and... Yeah, I, I really like, I admire people who put that much thought into their lyrics, so... You know, I, I love songs where, like, a huge amount of thought has gone into the story behind it and the way that the actual song will progress. I feel like one of the most noticeable things in mass-produced music, like, just from and pop, I guess, Top 50, is how the lyrics are literally just phrases and words thrown together like i'm in the sun there's a boy here oh a car it's like there's clearly no just buzzwords rather than any thought having gone into like the actual depth of a story that you're trying to tell so i have a lot of respect for people who actually put in the effort to be like what am i trying to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, i think there was like a i don't know I, there's the one song that came out recently i can't remember which one i'm trying to think about but 
It's like they they established the chorus and then that was it. Like there's nothing wrong with like repeating word if it gets like your point across or if it just sounds nice, but you could tell it was made within like a day, maybe. Yeah. It's like okay, the chorus is there, and I'll, I've noticed a lot of people who listen to like very. I sound very like edgy teen here, but very mainstream music. <laughs> um, they seem if it the if this all the song really has to be for most people is like it has to have a chorus, and if it repeats it enough times and it's catchy, that's it. That's all it needs. It is that is very upsetting. Or like as long as it's under three minutes, so that I don't have to get bored and switch to something else. That sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, in, uh, funny enough, like, I recently I saw, uh, I wanted to see it earlier, but it just it never lined up, the stars never lined up, but uh, I saw Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, the biopic for Queen, mm. and I, I thought it was really good. Uh, there was a part where the record company was like, no one, no one's going to listen to Bohemian what's it, whatever, whatever you call this <laughs> song, and he's like, framework is like it's bohemian rhapsody and it's poetry and people will like it and, and he's like no no one will like it and so they left him and then of course they ended up that was one of their most popular songs and so that like, was, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was the song that like pulled them from bankruptcy i think that yeah. they were like on the edge of collapsing because they hadn't had any hits and then bohemian rhapsody they blew their whole budget on bohemian rhapsody and it paid off yeah and um, it just turned out to be the, like the best song, and it was five minutes long. <laughs> I choked on my water. Nice. Oh, dear. oh wait, not the choking part's not good, but the fact that you're staying hydrated is good. Um. <laughs> We're also sponsored by Dasani. Uh, thank you, Dasani. Dasani um, water bottle. No, that'd be great. No, if we got a sponsor, Dasani, that'd be like million dollars <laughs> per video probably but no but hey Dasani if you're listening uh, uh, email me um, sponsor them <laughs> I seem to fall more towards the uh, classical classical rock and a bit of edgy stuff in music for uh, that's what I lean towards a little bit more I also like a lot of old songs but I more lean towards uh, fucking classical rock and stuff like that. Mm. I like Beastie Boys and just a, a bunch of a bunch of other artists that I felt like at the time they put a lot of work into their music. And now, like singers and artists today, I know we I know we've already gone over this topic, but I just want to express like how how much I kind of dislike it. it. It's to the point where people. Uh, People do just uh, put out these songs that are so shallow, so like n just not worked on. Uh, 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 what's the word for it? Oh, I forgot it. Uh, uh, it, 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 does, it just doesn't have any work put into it. There we go. Yeah. yeah. It, there is a lot to say about it. I think, in fairness, like there definitely was a lot more passion i think in like the 60s and progressive rock and alternative rock and like folk and that sort of stuff and blues and jazz etc etc but at the same time there was a lot of mass-produced stuff going on like what would you call it bebop music and there was also like carol king and jerry goffin who then went on to be like really prol prolific songwriters and creators were originally in like what was essentially a factory setting where they're just writing songs every single day Mm. It, like, locked into tiny rooms and just write a hit. I need a hit. One more hit. Again, 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 again. With and like starting to lose more and more meaning as they were just writing the first thing that came to their head. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. <laughs> God, Classic. I remember cleaning up uh, my fucking my parents' house one day, and that song just started playing. And my brother went up and he shut the TV off where the song was playing. <laughs> Ow, choked on air. Uh, and I was so proud of him. Uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, not not too big of a fan of that song. <laughs> you good, bro? 
No, I'm oh. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break from talking. Okay. Ow. Oh. Um. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, uh, we might need to have a call a know, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but so, uh, when did you start uh, uploading on you your music to YouTube? Um. Well, I started my channel in like. I think early 2015, late 2014, and I was originally not posting music at all, I was just posting, like, just terrible, terrible me speaking out of camera videos, and then someone said, hey, you play guitar, you should, you should start uploading songs, so I did, and deleted, like, the first ten videos that I ever uploaded recently, mm. but I think I finally, like, committed to it in, like, later 2015, I think, with the Dodie cover, mm. and when that got a good feedback, I was like, oh shit, maybe I could commit to this. Maybe this could be an actual thing. Oh. And thankfully enough. Yeah, I definitely get that, like, second-guessing yourself when you're, like, putting yourself out there. Oh, absolutely. That's... I, I do that every time I upload a video. I'm like, everyone's gonna hate it. This is the time I get cancelled. And it's like... Just a constant battle with myself as to whether or not I should just be doing this because I want to, or whether or not I'm doing it to impress other people, which I think is... A very poor motive to have. Hmm. Brad, breaking news, you're cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I noticed, uh, I, I tuned in, of course, like, uh, I asked you to be on the podcast when you were doing your 100,000 subscriber stream, I believe. Mm -hmm. And within a week, you've already, like, I noticed you already had, like, 14,000 more subscribers within, and that doesn't even, I mean, that. That doesn't even count the people without accounts, you know? Mm. And it's just, I'm really glad to see how fast you're growing. And it's Thank really you. cool. It is really it's cool kinda, to see it. It's all kind of come out of, because of, ironically, the Bohemian Rhapsody film, because that came out, my Killer Queen video got, like, blasted into everyone's recommended. So that's kind of what put me in the spotlight for a little bit. And I'm glad to see that people are actually staying rather than just oh who's this kid <laughs> moving on <laughs> yeah yeah because th th i think that shows like a true like the uh, true commitment because like people listened when it was big and then they're, they're still here it is very cool it's very surreal as well to like to post something and have a thousand views in a few minutes and just be like what is going on who are you people <laughs> Because I'm so used to it just being me and like a hundred subscribers and five of them watch and I'm like, what a community! I'm so famous! And now it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I have I have a great, I have a really great feeling that like with this like musical journey, I, I'm sounding very really more metaphorical here, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, with what you're doing, I think that you have great intent and that I think it's gonna hold you accountable. Like wherever you go with this, you know? I hope so, thank you. I think one of my main goals is to, like, bring on a new wave of lyricism, I guess, because I really admire, like, the lyricism of the 60s, and that kind of died down for a while. Obviously, as we know, look at the top 50. It's getting very nihilistic, but, like, I would like to see more of people putting thought into their lyrics and for that to become mainstream again rather than just like more indie or like a little cult following of oh you actually think about what you're doing you're so new and original and it's like no that would probably be the basis of it given you're making a career out of it <laughs> so, yeah that's been this is not a new thing <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I really i really hope that 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 becomes what music is in the next few years and because i think with youtube despite how much i hate on youtube uh the what youtube's done is given a place for people to give out their put out their music put out their work and not have to go through like a company that does these kind of things in the past and say oh we don't think you're gonna do good so we're not gonna support you you can support yourself and if you get a following then it, it's it's your doing and you control if you move forward and people it, youtube is such a used uh site now that you being popular on youtube is just as equal as going the traditional route when it comes to music 
Hmm. For all its faults, I can appreciate it for that at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, this I mean, it can be applied to several things. Like it's not just music, but like I think almost almost especially music because of how a lot of people go to YouTube just for music and like when they're searching through they don't always just find the mainstream music that's on the radio 24/7 or the new single they'll they'll search for something and they'll find uh, other like maybe covers or they'll find original songs and it's yeah I don't know I'm rambling on it, but like it's really really good I think it's it's doing something good at least <laughs> You know, I fully agree with that, especially because you can, you can listen to a song and then get recommended, like, ten other versions of that song from loads of other smaller artists, whereas if you were just listening to it on, say, like, iTunes or Spotify or the radio, you'd never get anything close to that. Especially because the music industry is so incredibly toxic, it is pretty great that people can be self-made now and decide where they want to go with it and whether or not, like, the amount of money that they want to be making and how much work they want to put into it rather than just... Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> You're the corporate slave. Make music, please. <laughs> <laughs> Not even <laughs> sleep. <laughs> I will ask you nicely. Now make me money. <laughs> yeah, basically, that's a that's a good good synopsis of the music industry. Like with every with every biopic you see, uh, it's it. it you don't want to say it's the same story because that kind of takes away from the movie, but it's almost the same story when it comes to like the pressure and then media like swarming over and then like hey, you need to make this make me a hit like right now and then like the use of like drugs and stuff like that. It, it, it seems too common. I think also that is a very fair point, but I, I've never actually thought about it from that point of view because I feel like one of my qualms with biopics is how formulaic they are. There's always like, ooh, rising star, then you get a montage of them becoming famous and then they fall into drugs and everyone's like, no, we can't talk to you anymore. But then there's like the one friend that comes back and helps them and then they get their rise to fame and it ends with a big performance, which is the same in every single one. But in fairness, it's a common thread in the industry. Like that is a very common story to have happened. Yeah. Didn't the like... Oh, go Pardon? ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I think the Elton John film is probably the same, but I haven't seen it yet, so I can't actually comment on that. Didn't, like, Justin Bieber, uh, fucking, I don't know how to say his last name, uh, uh, he went to, he went to jail, like, for the fucking, uh, it was a few years after his music industry really took off, his fucking bubblegum pop stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's kind of what happens to music artists. Sometimes fame just goes to goes to their head, and you know, sometimes you can't stop that. You may be a good person at heart, but you know, you, it's kind of easy to succumb succumb to that stuff when you have options to choose from. Yeah, yeah. like look at, look at Amy Winehouse. She was an incredible artist, and the, the industry turned yeah. her in a drug-obsessed mule, and it, it killed her. Like, literally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Prince, Prince, and, uh, didn't Prince die from, an, like, an opioid overdose or something like that? Something like that. Oh, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I've heard that, but I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't say for sure. But that sounds right. Uh, yeah. it, it was really sad to, when that, when that news broke out, and it, it's really sad to, to that, for that to be such a common thing. And yeah, like no one looked at that and thought, "Oh my God, opioids! How did that? How did he get access to those?" It's just always oh, in the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like there's no no one's held accountable. I mean, I'm not trying to go like, "Oh, we need to search for the drugs," but like, uh, it's like people are aware about how that how apparent that is in like that industry, and there's not really much that I guess can be done because. You know, like if you see footage of a musician doing drugs or something, or something like that, like it, it doesn't, it technically can't be, I don't know, it can't be 100% used. Cause like there's like, you know, there's footage of like uh, Snoop, Snoop Dogg, you know, doing like smoking weed, like on a podcast, I think once, but like he's not gonna get arrested for that. Mm. 
Yeah, like, it's like not, no one's gonna like go out of their way to arrest him for that. And I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know why I'm going this way with the conversation. I'm so You're confused. speaking at a million <laughs> miles per hour. I picked up nothing of what you just said. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's just not, let's just not talk about whatever I'm, whatever I was gonna talk about. No, 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 keep going, keep going. I wanna, I wanna hear you. Come on, go. Uh, I kind of just want to talk more about music instead of drugs now. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's took wait. Quite a turn. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> uh, I'm just one empowered artist boy, and I've. Uh, I can't speak much about music because it's not. It's not something that I uh, that. I I do twenty four seven, but uh, you know it's something about it's like a hobby of mine, like art and stuff like that. So I don't I don't have much to say about it. But if I do have one thing to say about it, art is art and music is art. So there. Yes, I agree with that. <sighs> I think all of our brains are melting. Just yeah, mine's definitely. Mine, mine wasn't there to begin with, so uh, no problem there. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, recording with us. We're really, we're really glad that you were able to to do this. No problem. Thank you for inviting me on. It's been a very cool experience. I've never done anything podcast related before, so. And well, with that, uh, oh, uh, do you have anything you want to plug? We're gonna we're gonna put all your stuff in the description. But like, is there anything you want to specifically uh, promote here? Uh, I think my channel mainly. Listen to my new song. It's called Turtles All the Way Down, and it's inspired by the John Green book of the same name because it's about mental health, and that's something I'm very passionate about. So. Oh man, that's like a that's a, like a whole other podcast episode. It's a whole other episode, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, uh, but yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for being on. It, um, I gotta say, uh, a really big fan of your work, and it's cool to talk to you about music itself. And um, but thank you guys for listening. Um, uh, uh, we're really glad we uh, we started this podcast. And we're glad to have like really talented people on this on this podcast and hear their thoughts and. Uh, like I said, all our brains are kind of slowly melting from whatever is going on. But thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time. Uh, Gamer Fuel. Gamer, yeah, uh, we're sponsored by Gamer Fuel. Uh, no, no, we're not, but that'd be great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bye, guys. <laughs>